I don't know, man. Are you sure about this? Calm your nerves, brother, for together we are unstoppable. Okay, okay, you're right. I'm picking the dwarf. Kevin and I have always been interested in picking up this game ever since we saw the early trailers for it. We kind of unintentionally avoided any spoilers and just refused to read anything about it. Like I said, it was unintentional. It's not like we just kind of forgot about the game or something. Well, it came out and we decided we wanted to pick it up. I mean, it looks like a great dungeon crawler. Before playing this game, I was just expecting a very simple brawler like the Dungeons and Dragons arcade game. But I was surprised with the amount of depth this game actually provided. It truly feels like a fleshed out RPG that just happens to play like a brawler. From Odin Sphere, Muramasa, and even Grim Grimoire, we have played most of Vanillaware's very distinguished style of games. The art style is jaw-droppingly gorgeous, but honestly, the opening cutscene kind of makes it look cheap, like the characters just stretch and it, I don't know, it doesn't look right. However, the in-game sprites and just all the profile pictures look fantastic, except for the dwarf! You look off! Seriously, two seconds of human anatomy here. Your arm should not be way the F over here. Where is it connected? It does not work. It does not work. You get to choose from several different characters for this game. You have the fighter, elf, dwarf, sorceress, dwarf, wizard, and let's not forget the dwarf. Uh, you said dwarf three times. Because he's the motherfucking dwarf. What's nice is that each of these heroes had different levels of difficulty. The sorceress and wizard, for example, are the toughest as far as learning curves go, while the fighter is definitely the easiest to start out with. When you decide who your heroic hero of heroic quest is, you choose their color scheme and name them. A bit of advice, if you're struggling with coming up with a creative name, just check out their most defining characteristic. For example, I went with the majestic, powerful, impressive Amazon. I named her Butt. Yeah, the fan service in this game is just ridiculous at times. Shit, there's even some man service. God damn, Roland. Yeah, in our regular campaign, I went with the Sorceress because I wanted to see if I could really overcome the challenge of her expert level skills. Actually, despite her busty feature, she is my favorite character. Why? Skeleton Army, motherfucker, yeah, hardcore! Plus, she has a bunch of other radical magical abilities. The Ice Barrier is quickly becoming my new favorite. Something that's really cool and unique about the quests is as you complete them, you unlock a picture along with some more information about the quest you completed. The saddest quest, where I immediately regret what I did, was the one involving the little witch Lima. You're told to stop her from being resurrected by the goblins, so you know, that's bad, right? Well, you find out it's this cute little girl that saved them, and they wanted to bring their hero back, and she's just so adorable. You misled me, quest! I would have let her live! One of the few problems I have about this game is that you are very limited in what quests you can carry. And the reason why I don't like this is you're just kind of forced to choose to do some quests while having to ignore other quests. Shit, even one quest involved you removing these books from this bookshelf to unlock this secret passage to get into this like hidden laboratory. But for the longest time we couldn't figure it out, but then it's a- Wait. Is that a fucking arch? Are you kidding me? It took us hours to figure this out. Whoa, Kevin, calm down. Oh, come on, you know that's bullshit. No, hey, no, go sit in the corner, go in the corner. Fine. The quests are kind of a big deal on the side. I mean, there's a lot going for them outside of the main objectives of defeating the dragon. They range from being really easy to understand to being cryptic as all hell, like Kevin said about the hidden doorway. <sighs> all right, time back. Now, this game is clearly designed to be a multiplayer experience. Shit, it even prompts you to play online whenever you get the chance. So if you do plan on picking up this game, definitely play it with a friend. So we don't want to spoil the story of this game because it's honestly the most enticing part of the experience. But the best feature is the cooking mini game. God damn, we get so fucking excited when we get to cook between locations. Screw killing these guys and leveling up. I just want to cook something. <laughs> Eat your shit out, Gordon Ramsay. It's real, come on. So if you guys are anything like me and you're looking for a really fun couch co-op, I highly, highly recommend checking out Dragon's Crown. You can put a lot of hours into it, you can change different classes, it's just a really fun game to play with your friends. This truly is a D&D co-op experience. Everything down to the narrator speaking on behalf of everyone, to the expansive lore that is presented within this world. I have never felt so immersed in a game. I think it's safe to say that if you haven't played this game, pick it up. You definitely will not regret it. Dude, I'm just gonna play this at home. But, but the quest isn't over yet. We still need to find the dragon's crown. Go home, Kevin. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. 
Hey guys, thanks for checking out another video. Check out any of the older videos. You know, hey, I got a Tumblr now. Check that out. The link is down there. It follows kind of my exciting adventures of me working on each episode. Yeah, exciting shit. I know, right? Yeah, buddy.